everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So I realized recently that whenever I analyze people in the fitness space, it's typically women. And to be honest, that's because I mostly follow women. But I figured today it would be fun to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly in the male influencer world specifically with fitness. I needed some help with this one, so I went on Instagram and I asked you, who do you follow that's a male fitness influencer? Give me the good, the bad, give me your thoughts. So in today's video, we're basically going to go through a bunch of them. I'm gonna give you my recommendations on who I would recommend following, who I would not recommend following, and the why behind it. To keep this video from being like hours long, we are gonna keep this commentary to 10 people. Five good, five bad. But anyone who doesn't make the video that I do think is still worth a follow, I'm gonna leave their information down in the the description box below. Overrated or underrated? Homa4613 wants to know my thoughts on intermittent fasting. Pay attention, watch this whole reel. I know I'm gonna piss someone off because someone always has to get pissed off on Instagram. Intermittent fasting is overrated and by a lot. This is not me saying intermittent fasting is bad and you shouldn't do it and it's harmful. That's not what I'm saying. It's a very useful tool if you like to skip breakfast and maybe lunch. But let's not overthink this. That's all intermittent fasting is. You skip breakfast, and if you want a longer fast, then you skip lunch. That's it. You're not doing anything special. There's not this crazy magical shit going on inside your body. You're fucking skipping a meal or two, and that is it. If that's beneficial for your schedule, amazing. If you're hungry in the morning and you like breakfast, don't intermittent fast. It's not magical, it's not special, it's not gonna burn fat faster, it's not gonna make you live to 150 years old. It's just skipping breakfast and maybe lunch. If it works for you, great, but that's it. And that's why it's overrated, because so many people are pushing this out as the end all be all, as a panacea to health and fat loss. It's not, you're just skipping a couple meals. That's not me saying intermittent fisting, no, intermittent fisting. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, should I start over? I have actually gotten multiple comments before that I look like Jordan Syatt's little sister which I will take as a compliment. A, because I think he's cool as shit, and B, because he's younger than me. So I will take the younger sister compliment. So I'm a big fan of Jordan's because he's just like no bullshit, but a great communicator. He's really good at taking like complex ideas and breaking them down into really digestible, understandable concepts. I know a lot of people don't like him because he does curse. He kind of does what I do where he'll like troll trolls in his comments. I think a lot of people wish that he was like more professional, but I think it's really silly to ask somebody to change how they are just to suit what other people like. First of all, Carmen is from Philly, so go birds. Secondly, Carmen is a very accomplished coach. He actually used to work for Mike Boyle, who I talk about that cert that I got from him all of the time, the CFSC, Certified Functional Strength Coach. And while I was taking my Bell Mechanics certification, Carmen actually came on one week as a guest speaker and worked with us all about the importance of rotation and stability in training. If you're looking for ideas on how to include different planes of motion into your training, more rotation into your training, which is something that I get asked all the time about, this is definitely someone that you want to give a follow to. Let's fucking talk about this I don't have time excuse for a second. There's 168 hours in one week. If you work a nine to five, that's 40 hours. If you hit the gym for one hour a day, that's seven hours. If you sleep eight hours a night, that's 56 hours. Leaving you with 65 hours left to work on your goals. So it's not that you don't have time, it's that you fucking lack self-discipline, so get to work. This is not helpful advice, and let me tell you why. When I was a brand new trainer at a big box gym, I was also taught this subtraction method. We all start with 24 hours in a day, right? Nobody can dispute that. Got my pen, got my paper, subtract work, subtract sleep, and hey, what do you know? If all you do is work and sleep, you have plenty of time for the gym. You just haven't prioritized it. But one day, I met with a client who didn't fit my simple equation, and I'd come to learn that she wasn't a rare exception either. This person had two full-time jobs. Whoa, what? Minus 80 hours. Minus sleep, she only got six hours a night. An hour commute to and from her jobs. School, part-time as well. A single mom of two kids that she had to feed and get ready for school and put to bed. How many hours are we at? And she cared for an elderly parent. Man, how'd we get to negative hours? 
Am I saying that nobody can find a little extra time for exercise? No, I'm not. But it's important to understand that some people have more obligations, more responsibilities, and more barriers to health and fitness than you do. And telling people that they're just making excuses or they don't want it bad enough or they're not disciplined enough isn't helpful or motivational in the least. Adam is probably the most empathetic coach that I have seen in like the online fitness space. He approaches everything from a place of kindness, and understanding. And I would say he is like the epitome of he will meet you where you're at. He does a lot of commentary content. So like playing someone else's video, giving his take on it and how he would approach the situation. So if you're into that style of content, it's definitely an account that you want to follow. You are craving baked goods or gluten. Gluten doesn't, doesn't really sound all too fancy, but like pizza, pasta, breads, croissants, <laughs> you know, or, or any and all of these baked things, all the baked goodness, usually what you're craving the is the energy of your father. What? By the way, you can have a terrific, terrific relationship with your father, or you can have a really bad relationship with your father. But subconsciously, when you're reaching out for that piece of baguette, you are craving the nurturing of your father or his energies in your life. So Ben is actually So He Fits or So He Carpenter's husband. They do a lot of content together, uh, a lot of commentary, a lot of skits, and a lot of it is very funny while also being informative. And the other thing that Ben talks about a lot is the mental health side of the fitness industry, fitness marketing, fitness tactics. So I think that's just like a nice little niche that he has found in the industry. I want to share my top three reasons why I like the foam roller because it gets poo-pooed a lot in the evidence-based trainer community and the reason for that is when it first came onto the scene it was said to work by helping to get knots out of the muscles and also helping to flush lactic acid but research has since proven both those things to not be the case so these people are saying it's a waste of valuable training time and I disagree my top three reasons why are one it helps people feel better two it helps people feel better and three it helps people feel better I don't know exactly why I hope at some point somebody figures it out but in the meantime, I know that when I do it, I feel better and my clients report feeling better when they do it. And I get innumerable messages from people in my online program who have never foam rolled before saying it helps them. And I'm in the business of helping people feel better. So I see no downside to it. I think we can all agree it's safe and it takes four to five minutes at the beginning of the workout. I think detractors probably spend more time than that each day arguing on the internet. So we're gonna keep doing it. I feel like Ben is just like, an old school coach. Like, I feel like I've known about him forever and he happens to train Chelsea Handler, which is pretty cool. I think that Ben just like finds a really nice balance of here's the things you need to do and here's the things that you can do if you just wanna do it and if you just enjoy it. Again, I couldn't talk about everybody that I want to talk about in this video, but I have like 10 more coaches or influencers as we're calling them in this video down below. So definitely check out their stuff as well. Here are my three best tips for losing weight and burning fat. Number one, create a caloric deficit. So there is no getting around this. You have to create a caloric deficit to lose weight. That means that you are burning more calories than you are consuming. And I don't care how you do it, just do it. Now, don't starve yourself. Don't go overboard with your deficit because then you're gonna go into that starvation response. You're gonna slow your metabolism down, hit a plateau and probably quit because you're not losing weight anymore. So 20 to 30% caloric deficit, that's a great place to start and then adjust from there. Number two, focus on resistance training over cardio. Too many times I hear about people who wanna lose weight and they're going to the gym and they're running on the treadmill for 45 minutes a day, doing cardio seven days a week. That ain't how you're gonna lose weight the fastest, okay? Can cardio assist with weight loss? Sure, because you're burning calories doing it but what's going to help you burn the most calories and burn the most fat and get the fastest progress is resistance training why because you're going to burn calories while you do the lifts but then you're also going to be building muscle which is going to speed up your metabolism so you're not only going to burn calories while you're doing the workout but you're going to burn more calories while at rest because your resting energy expenditure is higher because you have more muscle on your body so stop doing so much cardio focus on resistance training and then the third one and this is going to be the most important and that is to follow a sustainable 
plan. And what I mean by that is figuring out something that actually works for you and your lifestyle and your preferences and something that you can stick to. Because I can give you a cardio filled plan that would get you results, but if you can't stick to it, what's it matter? So you need to find something that works for your lifestyle that you can actually stick to and anything that you can stick to is where you're going to get results. And if you want help with figuring out a plan that you can actually stick to, that's actually sustainable, where you don't have to live on the cardio machine, then DM me the word burn and I'll invite you to hop on a free call with one of my fitness coaches. In case you missed it, I already made a whole video on Vshred. But a lot of you probably just watched that clip and you were like, where are the red flags? Like, it's not that bad, right? What was bad about what he's saying? Vince is known for taking whatever's popular or other people's literal content and just doing it himself. But there is a theory out there that he actually has no clue what he's talking about. If you watch the video again, you will see that he is literally reading off a laptop, barely understanding the words that he's saying, and like, they're kind of comprehensible sentences, but it just doesn't sound like he actually knows what he's talking about. And you know, overall, again, you can watch the V-Shred video, but he, he, he's just like a snake oil salesman. He's repurposing these body types that have never been backed in science and just kind of like scares people into losing weight. But I, I really am convinced this dude has zero clue what he's talking about. So that's a common misconception because we used to do this for the lumbar strength, trying to work the erectors so you'd have lumbar motion. Along the way, we realized we can use the 45 degree hyper to target the glutes, but you're gonna do two things. One, turn your feet out 45 degrees. This puts the hips into hip external rotation, which allows for a stronger glute contraction at the top. The second thing is round your entire spine, including your tucking your chin, and this shuts down the erectors. So they will not activate. You're not erecting the spine. Push your hips into the pad, making sure not to unravel, come up, boom, right here. If she comes up higher, this is just erectors. So you stay rounded, and chances are if you do it this way, you might feel a little more lateral hamstring, but this will be the first time, go for it, do five reps. This will be the first time you feel like the glutes are the limiting factor. So this is how you feel your glutes during a 45 degree hyper. This one's gonna ruffle some feathers. I feel like Brett is a really good example of like, things are not fully black and white or fully good or fully bad because Brett is super intelligent. I'm sure he is a fantastic coach, but I have, I have two issues with him. Number one, I just can't take anyone seriously who is a man specializing in women's fitness, especially when you're a man specializing in women's butts in fitness. Like that's what his brand is. And it's really just weird to me. Like it's icky. I don't know. Like think of it, it like what if I was like I am a male fitness specialist in chest. What? <laughs> Like, it's so stupid. Okay, and then the other reason why I just kind of like step back from him and, and I don't really give him my follow is that there are allegations against him from his ex about when they were together, him being emotionally and physically abusive to her. Again, these are allegations, no one sue me. But regardless, even just the first red flag of being a women's butt specialist is enough for me to be like, mm, I don't really wanna follow you. Hey, common sense nutrition advice. Tracking your calories is a great place to start if you're a beginner. But if you're serious about making a real and lasting change, all right, at some point you're gonna have to let your balls drop and build a healthier relationship with food. Here's three ways I recommend doing that. Prioritize protein every time you eat. Protein improves satiety and keeps you feeling fuller for longer. All right, the second thing, cut out all processed and packaged foods. In other words, quit eating low quality shit foods. And then number three, whenever you're having a craving, give yourself the protein test. Ask yourself, am I hungry enough to eat a piece of pure protein, such as chicken, fish, or steak? If the answer is yes, go eat pure protein. But if pure protein does not sound appetizing, you're not truly hungry. You're just having a craving, all right? Remember, if you have a big ass gut, you have plenty of stored energy on your body in the form of body fat, all right? You're not gonna die from starvation anytime soon. <laughs> His intensity is freaking me out. Like, are you on Addie's? All of his content is very like, I see where you're coming from, but what is this approach? Like, is it 2002? There's very little nuance. There's very little empathy. It's all just very like. If you're fat, move more, eat less. It's that simple. If you can't figure that out, you're not trying hard enough. You know what I mean? Like, that's the vibe I get. And drugs. People who get acne are told it's hormonal, but that's not the truth. 
yes, acne can happen during a hormonal change like menstruation, getting your cycle ovulation, maybe even something really stressful happening too. But people get tricked with the whole, it's hormonal. That's where the acne is coming from. Then what about the acne that comes during other times that's not hormonal? Let's put everything else aside for a second and understand fully that this is a person who gets his medical advice from the spirit of compassion. What? Like a ghost? I really don't even know what this guy stands for, except for that like he is a celery juice stan. But I cannot accept the fact that you were like getting medical advice from the ghost of Christmas past. Fake health foods, oatmeal. You think this is the best breakfast ever. This is not the breakfast of champions. Oats are full of phytic acid, a compound that chelates that bites onto minerals like magnesium, zinc, calcium, iron, and many others in your body and prevents you from absorbing them. Basically, your morning oatmeal is robbing you of nutrients. Not a health food, horrible breakfast. Uh, this guy just fear mongers. All it is is like, if you eat oatmeal, you'll die. Come on, buddy. I mean, I know his whole platform is like prioritizing meat. You don't need vegetables. You don't need these other things. And, and he talks a lot about like the studies that back up his claims. But like, let's be real. You can find a study to back up anything. And that's not to tell you that like you need to discredit all studies, but like, it's just, there's more nuance than that. We need to look at what the study actually was, how controlled it was, who was paying for it. You know, there's always going to be personal bias of someone who conducts the study. So we kind of need to take everything with a grain of salt. And again, like zoom out and look at the bigger picture because I'm sure that there are studies that say you don't need vegetables, but then I'm sure there are studies that say that you do need vegetables. And what we've seen thus far is kind of just showing that like, moderation is key. The, the poison is in the dose, right? Because guess what? You could eat perfectly your entire life. You could work out perfectly your entire life. You could sleep perfectly your entire life. You could still get cancer and die. Sorry to make it morbid, but like being perfect does not guarantee perfect results. So instead of worrying about being perfect all the time and putting that stress on you, why not live in moderation, live in balance, and hope for the best outcome. Ooh, okay, I'm proud of myself. I didn't ramble too much. I kind of let the content speak for itself. But if there's anybody else that you think needs some commentary or just anybody that you would recommend following, please leave it down in the comment box below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. And I will see you all in the next one.